Benjamin J. Knowles, United States Marine Corps. Her service was set forth in the following citations. Her heroism while serving as Rifleman, Company D, 1st Light Armor Reconnaissance Battalion, Regimental Combat Team 5, Night Patrol in Helmut Havis, Afghanistan, Lanceable Knowles fell into a 9 foot deep, 15 foot wide canal full of icy water as a bridge she was crossing shifted unexpectedly to the surface. But in the darkness and the freezing water working against them, the Marine's death seemed imminent. Despite the debilitating effects of his own previous immersion, Lance Cole Knowles jumped into the frigid water to save his squad leader. Grabbing a hold of the submerged Marine, the two were swept downstream until Lance Cole Knowles finally caught hold of the bank down and anchored himself and his squad leader to the edge of the canal. By then, lacking the energy to exit the water on his own, he used his remaining strength to hold on to his sergeant until the other members of the patrol pulled them both to safety. The other one is commitment, not only uh, to, to our country, to our core, but each other. And I always say, as you look to your left and to your right, uh, it's that person to your left and to your right that's going to make the difference in your life. And so the relationship that you build uh, and then establish really says it all. And that's always something special to see and witness a uh, fellow Marine or a fellow sailor do and go up above and beyond. And the pride that you have to make sure, sure that you're not the person uh, that caused this issue, but you're the person that's always to the left and to the right and taking care of each other. And so I, I, I say to you, keep up the good work and thank you for that type of dedication. And let's take the uh, time now. Come on up here and all so they don't have to look for you. We're going to have you right here so everybody can come and congratulate you and say thank you for a job well done. All right, CEO. Nobody, I'm, I'm, I'm looking behind you. Benjamin Jarrett Knowles from Stevensville, Montana. What's your billet? My billet? Yes. Well, on uh, deployment, I was a point man, rifleman. Good to go. So in your own words, could you describe how you received this award, or what were your actions? Um, well, basically, uh, bridge collapsed out from underneath me. Uh, There's nothing I could do. And I got stuck, sucked underneath the bridge. And, um, you know, my flak, my Kevlar rifle, all that shit got stuck under there. And uh, there's nothing I could do. And, and, and eventually I started to drown and I ripped myself off the bottom of the bridge. One last heave of, you know, strength. And uh, got swept downstream. Corporal Bagley pulled me out. And then, uh, you know, while I was over on the side on the bank puking my brains out, um, you know, my squad leader, Sergeant Gutierrez, he fell in. And, uh, and I knew that he was in the same boat as me, and I knew that I had to do something. You know, I didn't really think about it. It was just, it was just the right thing to do. So I jumped back in and uh, swam over, got him. You know, and uh, and he was too, you know, it's too cold, it's too heavy. There's too much working against me for me to just pull him out outright. And so we got swept downstream until I could swim to the side and uh, and pull him up. And you know, from there, the, the other Marines on the patrol. Um, helped get us both out, but it was just the right thing to do. So. I noticed you're uh, really close to some of those Marines over there. Uh, could you just describe how they played a part in your, uh, like maybe how they played a part in your career or you? Absolutely. Um, Corporal Bagley, Corporal Slocum, definitely I wouldn't be the man I am today without them. Uh, when I first got to the fleet, it was, um, they taught me everything I know about being a good Marine, about being a good man. You know, um, 
I cannot stress enough that I, uh, I definitely would not be the man I am today without, you know, without them, because they taught me everything I know, you know, and it was their leadership and, uh, and just, you know, what they taught me made me who I am today. I can't say enough about them. <clears throat> uh, so when you first learned you were receiving this award, how did you feel? Were you like excited or? It's been so long since it happened. I mean, I completely forgot about it. I thought, you know, maybe I get it in like a NAM or something in country or, or something. I don't know. But you know, it's been almost, it's been about a year now, and uh, to be honest, I'd completely forgotten about it. So, you know, when I first you know saw it, I was like, what? You know, like, I didn't. I had no idea I was gonna get it. So, it's pretty cool. And uh, so, what does it mean to you, the award? Um, to be honest, uh, I'm not sure how I feel about it because, uh, you know, I mean, it, I, I appreciate it and I think, you know, I, I'm really grateful that I got it, but to be honest, I, I really don't think that I, uh, I deserve it simply because um, it was just the right thing to do, you know, like, I'm sure any, any one of, you know, my guys would have done it for me. I know that, you know, if it, the situation had been reversed, my squad leader would have jumped back in after me. You know, it was just something we do for each other. So I don't know that I necessarily, you know, even deserve it. It was just the right thing to do. So I'm not sure how I feel about it. And uh, so how did your, how does your family feel about you receiving it? Uh, my family, um, you know, they're definitely, they were excited when I, you know, told them that I uh, was getting the, uh, the medal and, and, uh, and they wanted to be here, but, you know, they live so far away that uh, they couldn't come down and get it, but they're definitely excited and proud and I'm sure my mom's home bragging about it to everybody that'll listen, so, you know, they're definitely proud of me. And uh, for maybe the junior Marines in your command, like Marines underneath you, uh, how does it, like, what does it mean to them, like, does it give them something to look up to, or? Um, I'm not really sure how to answer that. There's a, uh, it's just another example of the fact that, you know, us being in the infantry, we look out for each other, you know? I'll look out for any of them, and, and I know that they'll look out for me, and really that's, that's all there is to it, is just, you know, we look out for each other. And it's just an example of, you know, that we're all brothers and that, you know, I would do anything for you and you would do anything for me because that's just how we are, so. Um, did uh, General Bailey uh, give you any advice or say anything to you when uh, he pinned you on? You know, he didn't really say much. It was just a mutual understanding. You know, uh, when you know, a good man stands in front of you and shakes your hand and tells you that you did a good job, you know, there's just a mutual understanding, you know, from me to him, uh, you know, it, it was more the words, so. And uh, what was going through your mind uh, when you heard, you know, the splash and you knew what was happening to, what had happened to your squad leader, what was running through your head? Well, at that point, I was still on the side of the canal, uh, puking my brains out. I mean, I, I had swallowed so much water and the water over there is so, you know, disgusting and nasty. Um, I was puking my brains out. I heard, you know, I heard the other Marines start yelling and, uh, and the white lights hit the canal. And I knew at that point that um, somebody had, had gone in. And then I heard them calling out for Sergeant Goot. And I knew, uh, you know, I, I knew that he was in there. I knew that he was in the same shoes as me. He had his flak, Kevlar weapon, extra ammo, uh, food, uh, serialized gear, NVGs, grenades, everything you can imagine, full combat load, and then some. And I knew that, you know, I had barely just made it out of that. I knew that he needed me or somebody, he needed something to help him get out. And uh, I didn't really think about it. There's really no thinking about it. I just, he needed me, so I went in and after him. And uh, what, are, what are you doing next uh, in the Marine Corps? What's next for you? Right now, I'm trying to pick up Corporal Meritoriously, and, uh, and you know, um, uh, I have aspirations to uh, become a, a combat instructor, 
over at SOI. But um, my short term right now, I'm, I'm working on WSA and then hopefully going to McQuist uh, later on in the next couple months, um, which is kind of funny because I just almost drowned, you know, a year ago. But um, but uh, I'm, I'm overcoming, you know, all the memories I have of uh, that night and and I'm shooting for McQuist. So meritorious corporal, McQuist, combat instructor. Hopefully stay in. Absolutely. And uh, what, uh, did you want to be a McQuist instructor before this happened or? Not really. Um, you know, I, I've always kind of, I've always liked swimming. I've always, you know, been comfortable in the water. And, you know, like swim call has never been a problem for me, but uh, I don't know. I just, having the experiences that I've had and, you know, knowing what it's like, you know, it's kind of, uh, for lack of better words, motivated me to want to become, um, to, to not only overcome the, the memories that I have and overcome the fear I have necessarily um, and uh, I don't know man I just want to I don't know get over the fear I guess